Each night, you will find Rosa hunched over a low table, eyes squinting, trying to read her school books by the flickering candlelight. This is what so many rural areas in Mindanao and the Philippines consider normal, where electricity comes infrequently or not at all. This was Mindanao in 2010, the start of another decade that promised fast economic growth and development. Instead, what loomed large was the possibility of arrested development, brought about by the severe lack of power. Power was so much in demand that choices between renewable and non-renewable energy sources seemed unrealistic at best and illusory at worst. People were in dire need of cheap and reliable electricity, and they needed it fast. Time was not in favour of building megadams. This required a longer wait. Besides, these hydroelectric and geothermal power projects have historically caused violent conflict, the destruction of habitats, and the displacement of families. For years, Mindanao depended on the benefits of cheap and renewable energy from hydroelectric dams that were now functioning at less than half their original capacity. So, when Aboitis offered to set up a coal-fired power plant in Davao City, it was certainly an uphill battle for environmental groups to convince people to eschew fossil fuel power plants in favour of hydro, geothermal or solar energy sources. To be sure, the fisher folk and community members from different ethnic and religious identities who lived near the proposed site of the coal plant were rightfully concerned about the plant's effects on their livelihoods and their way of life. There were different interests at play. Balancing this was one thing, getting the different stakeholders to even begin listening to each other was another. It seemed impossible. This is the story of how an energy firm, civil society actors and local government made it possible. Their collaboration helped maximise the benefits of non-renewable yet reliable energy to drive local economic growth, ensure welfare goods for local communities, all while preventing violent conflict and reducing its environmental impact. This is the story of the Davao Multi-Stakeholder Group for Energy Concerns, or DMGENCO, and the cooperation with Therma South Incorporated. To be sure, a business that spends beyond what is necessary for production to begin with is not common practice. Getting consensus takes time. Participation entails costs. So how does it work for ThermoSouth and what can businesses learn from them? To understand why firms account for their actions, let's consider the notion of economic embeddedness. This says that people do not make decisions simply based on profit or economic reward, but that they are also motivated by reciprocity, shared values and morality. In terms of energy provisioning, this notion means that place also matters. The social contract between company and society is crucial. The trust and confidence the company built with communities is of value. At the core of this thesis too is the idea that inclusive and cohesive alliances can enhance development opportunities. This entails building trust between stakeholders, designing effective dialogue processes and drawing on the social capital of those involved. The Therma South story combined this with corporate social responsibility, or CSR, and conflict-sensitive business practices. CSR has evolved from mere compliance to driving social impact and development. Part of this is being sensitised to how businesses can impact violent conflict. This is especially important in conflict-affected areas like Mindanao. The actions of companies can aggravate conflict and cause further instability. Businesses must go beyond do no harm and contribute positively to peace and development. This is even more crucial considering the impact of fossil fuels on carbon emissions, climate change and the vulnerability of the Philippines to destructive web systems. Coal, after all, is still the main driver for ThermoSouth. Of course, simply bringing a diverse group together in a room does not automatically lead to good outcomes, especially when you have complicated power dynamics at play. So how did DMGENCO become effective? Its members included business representatives, community members, village officials, activists, academics and non-governmental organisations. All came in their individual capacity, offering their insight and inputs without representing specific groups. 
Group members were able to voice and solve problems, which built trust, relationship satisfaction and loyalty. The dialogue process held the company accountable. Likewise, the presence of champions at various levels within the Aboitis company was central. They spoke on behalf of the stakeholders outside the firm. They were the first to take the view that security is not about plant security, but the security of the community. Without them, there would have been no momentum behind institutional change. The facilitation of International Alert Philippines was key as the bridge between business and civil society actors. An established track record in conflict-sensitive development was essential to DM Genko's success and the belief in the practice of working with the included to meet the needs of the excluded. It was this distinctive perspective that brought the diverse backgrounds and inclinations of the DM Genko members together. These factors made DM Genko stand out as a refreshing example of people with different perspectives thinking collectively about the best interests of those living in a place they all care about and depend upon. This is a story, therefore, not only of energy and power, but also of economics and geography. All those involved were committed to the place and community where Therma South was built. They recognize that access to reliable energy is an important factor in maintaining peace and development. At its heart is the astute handling of power dynamics among different stakeholders. Civil society needs to engage the private sector and vice versa. Businesses provide jobs, generate taxes, create innovations. They are key players in the political economy of Mindanao and important local actors in building peace. DM Genko is ultimately a story of how those involved work creatively at the nexus of the three interdependent needs of power, peace and place to achieve positive outcomes.